Let's talk about gravitational potential energy in the universal law of gravity treatment. Recall that the law states that two masses separated by distance r are attracted to each other with a force that is directly proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. The direction is always towards the other mass. Let's now consider the energy needed to move the mass from radius 1 to radius 2. We will apply a force against gravity to move the mass at a constant speed. In that case, the net force in the radial direction must be zero, and hence the magnitude of the applied force must equal the magnitude of the force of gravity. We will now calculate the work done by the applied force from R1 to R2 through the dot product with the differential radius. With the dot product, only radial distance will matter, not any tangential displacement. We integrate and plug in the limits. Notice that now the energy input by the applied force can be expressed as a change of potential energy. Hence, this will be the form of gravitational potential energy using the universal law of gravity. If we were to graph this, then potential energy is more negative at small radii, but approaches zero at infinite radius. Comparing with the traditional linear version of potential energy, notice that we are still climbing up the energy curve with increased radius. As long as the change in radius is not too large, then the change in potential energy can be approximated as linear. Now let's consider the conservation of mechanical energy. The conservation of mechanical energy states that in the absence of any outside force other than gravity, the total mechanical energy of the system remains the same. Mechanical energy is the sum of kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy. This is the form using the universal law of gravity.
Let's consider the application to escape velocity. In a uniform gravitational environment approximation, we can calculate how high an object goes based on its initial vertical velocity. We can use conservation of mechanical energy for this. When the change in height is so large that gravity can no longer be approximated as uniform, we need to use the universal law version of the conservation law. Now, consider the following scenario. We throw a projectile with speed 1 from a surface at radius r1 from our central mass. At what speed do we need to throw it so that it will never return? This happens when the total mechanical energy of the object is zero. At every point in the trajectory, the kinetic energy is equal to the magnitude of the gravitational potential energy. We simplify and solve for velocity. This is known as the escape velocity from mass m from a distance r. The greater the mass, the higher the escape velocity must be. The further away you are from the mass, the less the escape velocity is. Let's demonstrate the use of escape velocity on a scientific application. Suppose we are traveling towards a really massive object. The closer we get to it, the higher the escape velocity will be. The highest speed in the universe is the speed of light. How close can we get to the mass before there is no possible way we can escape? Let's solve for this radius by rearranging our equation. This minimum radius is directly proportional to the mass of the object. This radius is referred to as the Schwarzschild radius for the mass and predicts the event horizon around infinitely dense masses known as singularities for a combined object known as a black hole.
note that this Newtonian treatment of gravity still only predicts the escape velocity around a black hole and not any of the time dilation associated with the general relativity treatment of gravity. However, it still predicts the tidal effect of differential gravity resulting in spaghettification.